promo shots. He's like a model out the Grattan catalogue, for crying out loud. He does uh, money on the side. Camden. Hello, Ellie. Ellie. Oh, Ellie. Hello, Nick. Yes, Ellie. Hello, Nick. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Uh, thank you so much for making me giggle. Well, thanks for saying that, Ellie. It makes me laugh. Thank you so much. It really means a lot, uh, given the general state yeah, of Yeah, given play. the uh, everything, yeah. Yeah, the second point I want to make um, is that those ladies who were fined, their fine was withdrawn after um, Mr. Outrage. Johnson. Oh. Mr. Johnson had um, cycled several miles outside of the zone which he had inflicted upon us. Mm. Um, and so to make up for it, rather than being prosecuted, um, they withdrew the ladies' fines. Right. I just thought I'd point this out. And I have a question. Yes. Why is Boris Johnson... Why is Boris Johnson? That's going to be the topic from now until the end of time, Ellie. Excellent question. Cheers, can I my dear. leave it at that? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's a full stop right there. Thanks a lot, Ellie. Why is Boris Johnson? Um, Think about it. Hmm? And text, there are thousands of millionaires in the UK who belong to a group called Patriotic Millionaires. They want to pay more tax to alleviate the current situation, but the government won't allow it. <laughs> You're funny, Anne. <laughs> Give me the name of one of them. I'll make this really simple for you. Just one, that's all. They could, of course, donate the money if they wished, if they really, really want to. They could write us all a cheque. David tweets, Fishy Sunak was grilled by the Treasury Select Committee. He pretended to be one of the people by saying he drives a VW Golf. Oh, please. Turns out he also owns a Range Rover, a BMW and a Lexus. <laughs> and that's just in this country. He probably keeps the roller for, uh, you know, California. Open top Rolls Royce. Of course. No doubt. For the uh, transportation of his fishiness. What have we done? I'd like to know, what have we done to deserve this? Because it must have been terrible. We should be very ashamed of ourselves. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Look at the time. Blimey. Doesn't time fly when you're out of your mind? <laughs> it's 11.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Andy Ivey. This is LBC. With Nick Abbott. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. So this was um, apparently f f uh, coming out of Davos. You know, the, where they um, all, uh, you know, these uh, grey-suited individuals meet in secret to carve up the world uh, between themselves like um, James Bond baddies. <laughs> This is a couple of months old now, this report in the uh, Super Soraway Guardian. More than 100 members of the global super rich called on Wednesday for governments around the world to tax us now to help pay for the pandemic response and tackle the gulf between rich and poor. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Paul, please. As millionaires, we know that the current tax system is not fair, they said in an open letter published in uh, January. Most of us can say that while the world has gone through an immense amount of suffering in the last two years, we've actually seen our wealth rise during the pandemic. Yes, they have. If you're a millionaire, then you've done really well. If you're a billionaire, then it's off the scale fantastic. COVID has been just great for millionaires and billionaires, but they say they want uh, to uh, pay uh, a, a little bit more or, you know, some in a lot of cases. And I would bet virtually all of them employ accountants in big shiny buildings to make uh, absolutely certain that their, uh, their affairs are efficient in every way, shape and form. <coughs> efficient. Uh, Lewisham. Hello, Jane. Hello, Nick. Jane. Yes, Jane. I voted for Did Nigel you? Farage. What do you want to do that for? Well, if he was running the country, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be like this no, you, at all. No, you can say that again. We've got a few idiots in our party. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. Nick, mm -hmm. 
Do you think that Nigel knows of the motoring party dot co dot uk? The motoring party dot co dot uk. Um, he could help the motoring party dot co dot uk. Yes. Yeah. Who are they and, then? And um, yeah, he would. Who, he who would are be, they? Who are they? Look them up. I'm not, I, I will party. not do anything of the sort. Tell me who they are. Why not? Because that's homework. I don't do homework at the weekend. But, Miss, it's the weekend. <laughs> we'll do that on Monday, then. Uh, 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 yeah, OK, I'll, I'll pencil it in on Monday. Excellent to work there, Jane. Thanks a lot for, you know, whatever that was. Now I've got Nigel's page up. I could uh, play the, um, you know, the, the clip. Do you want to hear the clip? Oh, OK, then. I, I, I'm uh, immensely um, grateful to you for everything you've done in British politics over the last few years. Uh, I used to be a an ardent Remain. I voted Remain. I believed in the European project. Mm -hmm. uh, I believed that staying in the European Union was the best thing for us. And then something happened and something monumental happened. I, it completely changed my, my opinion on, on the, the whole situation. What, uh, what was that monumental thing, Mark? I was kicked in the head by a horse. <laughs> right, very good. <laughs> OK, fine. Thank you. No, thank you, Nige. You're the best. <laughs> How did you get taken like that? We are thick, we are stupid. OK, then. Everything about that clip is perfect. The, the guy's timing, whoever he is, he should be a paid professional, a comic professional. The Peter Principle is apparently the name of the thing that I was describing some moments ago, where you get um, uh, elevated to, your, to a position of inability. I don't think it is. I think it's something else, isn't it? But uh, the thing is, we'll never know, sadly, ever. Let's have a call. Uh, in or on? I, I really don't know. Isle of Wight. Is it in or on, Billy? <laughs> well, to quote you, Nick... How how big does an island have to be before you're on it rather than in it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's on the Isle of Wight, Nick. Personally. On the Isle, that I, does I'm, that does seem to fit, yeah. Yeah. Whereas if I, I mean, there's a town in in on the Isle of Wight called Newport, hmm. so I I can be in Newport on the Isle of Wight. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird, isn't it? It's like on the Isle of Wight, we I, I never say I'm going uptown. I'm always going downtown. Regardless but, of where it is. Right, yeah, OK, regardless of the topography. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a very posh word. Isn't Don't it just, I, those words I, time, I just Nick. pulled that one right out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Nick, I, I called up because um, your lovely producer uh, put me through to you because I wanted to speak to you about Fishy Rishi. Mm. Um, and also all the other MPs, Nick, because... Yeah, what what is it with them? They are all so out of touch, all of them. Yes. I, I don't understand. I think we're the only country other than America where we vote for people that are nothing like us. I mean, Jacob rees -Mogg. Yeah, I've got nothing against the bloke as an individual. I'd probably have a pint. No, actually, I wouldn't. I'd take no. that back. I wouldn't have a pint with him. No, I wouldn't. Um, he, what on earth possesses the minds of the residents in North East Somerset to vote for it. It's absolutely mystifying. And they didn't just do it once. It's not like a, a mistake out of the blue. It's not an error. They did it over and over and over again. Yeah. Why? What is it that they can relate to with him? I mean, I, I can hardly see him uh, being sympathetic towards, you know, sort of a, a poor mother who's got to pay for, you know, all of her electricity of bills and stuff. Of course I mean, not. You just it, it just doesn't work like that, does it? How how can how can somebody like Jacob rees or Rishi Sunak sympathise with you know a, a woman uh, who's single with three or four kids who's struggling or deciding you know whether to put the heating on or or to, or to cook the food? Now, just I'm think, not a millionaire. No, just think, what would Jesus do? And then Jacob rees would do the opposite of that in every <laughs> circumstance, while saying that he's guided by his faith. Well, that's, uh, that's what I was going to say. I've heard it on Good Morning Britain, I think, a few years ago. So the, 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 the complete hypocrisy that staggering. comes out of his mouth. Yeah. It, it, it is staggering. And I will say this as well. That interview that James O'Brien did, that was just brilliant to watch. 
I, I mean, it was just fantastic. I watched which, the video and I watched it again. Which one? About a which, one? which one? Uh, it, it was about 23 minutes long. and uh, was it Jay, um, with Smug? James O'Brien. Uh, sorry? With Smug? Yeah, yeah, Jacob Reed, <laughs> Jacob Reed Smug, yeah. <laughs> um, and it was just, it was brilliant, just... Well, I think my, my favourite political interview, maybe of all time, is um, James O'Brien versus Nigel Farage, where oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, Uncle Nigel was getting more and more irate and uh, he, was, he was becoming undone. And uh, James <laughs> O'Brien, as, as Farage got louder, James O'Brien just sort of got quieter and, yeah. uh, and managed to unpick him <laughs> molecule by molecule. It was just absolutely fantastic. Oh, it, it was. I've watched it. Honestly, I'm. I'm. I watched it. I think about three months ago. So, well, and it's just. It's a perfect watch. It's. It's how you completely dismantle yeah. uh, ridiculous ideologies. And I remember there was a bit in there, Nick, where you, you're probably going to know the bit I'm talking about. Where um, I think it's to do with a, a member of UKIP saying something racist or something, or like employing. I don't know. I think it was illegal immigrants and. Um, I think James and Brian asked Nigel, when's the investigation going to happen, Nigel? And he sort of said, well, as soon as possible. And then James O'Brien turned around and says, this happened four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, time ticks at a different uh, level in uh, politics. The arguments that UKIP stands for aren't valid. Well, it's a, it's a bold claim, Nigel, <laughs> particularly from you. But if you say so, I'll have to defer to the expert in this regard. Thanks a lot, Billy. 0345... 6060973. And texts. Oh, no, that's the thousands of millionaires in the UK who belong to a group called Patriotic Millionaires. They want to pay more tax to alleviate the current situation, but the government won't allow it. <laughs> Anybody believe that? No. Not really. Not really, no. They could do something about it if they really, really wanted to. I th it's, it is weird that the more money you get the more you are desperate to cling on to it and acquire more of it. It's bizarre. I mean, you think if you had, say, a hundred million quid in a bank, like if you had a million, then you could chew through that pretty quick. You know, you just have to um, eat in the wrong place and, and go to the wrong shop and um, get a, uh, a cocaine habit, for instance. And you could chew through a million pound, uh, you know, pretty quick. Just ask any rock and roller. Rock but if you had a hundred million quid in the bank, you'd think that you'd just stop worrying about money. But they don't. They seem to worry about it all the more. And I, I go back to my uh, assertion about it's not the percentage that's levied on somebody's earnings or, or wealth that's the thing. It's the amount that that percentage is levied on. If you earn 10 million quid a year and the, uh, intra the um, tax rate is 10%, you're going to have to write a cheque for a million pounds. Nobody wants to do that. So they'll do anything they can to avoid doing it, regardless of what the income tax rate is. So when you hear people saying, oh, well, it would be much, much better if uh, it was, uh, you know, if, if, if we tax them less, then they'd avoid less. <laughs> no, no, they wouldn't. Not at all. Even if it was 1%, they'd still do everything in their power not to have to write that cheque. Are you kidding me? Icky tweets, I just don't get this. Why aren't we talking about a mass refusal to pay our energy bills? If a handful of people do this, they'll just cut us off. But if half their customers do it, they'll do the fastest 180 you ever saw. That is true, Icky. That is correct. Yes, they would. It's like if you owe the bank 50 quid, then you're in trouble. If you owe the bank 50 million quid... They're in trouble. 0345 Hey, you know what? There's um, a podcast called The Nick Abbott Habit, and it comes out on Mondays. It's a half an hour of best ofs. Now, I'm doing the shows from about two years ago at the moment, and we are just at the very foothills. We just heard about this, uh, the mad bat disease, <laughs> which was uh, coming over from China. <laughs> and um, it was all a bit... It was a little bit scary, but it was a little bit amusing as well because, we, you know, the it of it hadn't quite um, crushed us yet. We weren't being sent indoors with, uh, you know, no supper. Um, but it's just the funny bits that I pull out and stick out as a half-hour podcast. If you want to just check out of this 
this uh, news nightmare that has been engulfing us for the past uh, at least a couple of months now. Actually, it's a couple of years, isn't it? It's maybe, maybe 12 years. I think it's about 12 years now. And you just can't stand it anymore and you just want to be amused, then I think it'll be right up your alley. Ask for it by name on an internet near you, the Nick Abbott Habit. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, with Nick Abbott. Now, wait a minute. I don't like that kind of talk. Now, just stop it. It upsets me. 0345 6060 973. Let's have uh, Glasgow. Clicking, 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 clicking. There it is. Hello, Carolyn. Hello there. Hi, Nick. Hello. Um, hello, hello. You've got my accent, Chetty. I was going to ask you, um, was that woman serious about Nigel Farage being in charge? Please tell me she was joking. <laughs> she could have been serious. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't wait around long enough to find out. Oh, please. But anyway, I have to tell you, this morning I was listening. I was driving, actually, to work, and I was listening to James O'Brien and a woman called Zara called in and she was just talking about how things are difficult for her, about her family and how she was having to use hot water bottles to heat her kids yeah. and her kids are the most important thing to her. And, do you know, I had to pull over in the car because I was in tears. I couldn't stop crying. And I've, I was so distraught by listening to her. I mean, I, I'm, I'm lucky I've got a good job. My husband has, daughter at university. But I'm absolutely ashamed. I'm ashamed of our government. I mean, I've got, obviously in Scotland, we've got the Scottish government. Um, um, but I'll tell you something, I've never been an independent person and want independence. But people now, Boris Johnson has done more for the independence cause than anything. Yeah. It's, it's horrendous. And I, but then I hear people like Zara, and I don't, I don't want independence to abandon people at her. Do you know what I mean? I want I want to help people with her. And I just feel absolutely I was so distraught today and I've told I when I went to work I was telling people in work and they, everybody understands, they say it is just the country is just in a mess just now. Yeah. And I just I hope she's listening. I know she might not be, but oh God, I just we just want to help. We just want to help. And I don't mind I want to pay more tax. I don't mind paying more tax to help people. And the fact that they, they think we don't want to pay more tax is absolute nonsense. Well, it's um, it's something that they rely on as a vote winner. So it, it actually isn't nonsense because when it actually comes down to it, even if people will say, oh, you know, I would rather a more um, equal society where... Uh, you know, we, the well-off, earn a little bit less in order to spread the wealth around people who are really, really suffering. That sounds good until you actually take people's money away from them. And even if it's a small amount, uh, directly, even if they would indirectly receive more than they lose, you know, because of the spreading around in, the, in a more equal society, they still will say, no, I, I want to keep more of my money. And uh, that's exactly what the Tories will do next time around. And they'll keep going on about this uh, war on woke thing because that's a winner for them. Uh, anybody that's different to you, they're going to um, make you fearful of. Uh, the, the dinghy thing will come back and... We know what they're going to do because it works every time. Well, they're going to lose Scotland. That, I'll just tell you that now because they're going to lose Scotland because I, I can see it. I mean, my husband is totally anti-independence and even he's now saying, I can't put up with this much longer. Mm. So this is what's going to happen. And I think it's terrifying. It's terrifying because, again, I don't, you know, we've got friends in the north as well. You know, it's it's horrible horrible times and I just I, I really hope, I don't know, I'm hoping for a miracle. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> well, don't uh, hold your breath, but uh, thanks for that, Carolyn. 0345 6060 Holding out for a miracle. <laughs> which will not be arriving anytime soon. There having been none, uh, like, ever. I mean, if there were, then we'd know about it, right? Sanj texts, 
the Tories had a party on Tuesday. Did you see Michael Fabricant acting like some big kid saying how they haven't seen each other for nearly two years and they're going to have some wine and food and fun? Booze. Yeah, I did. I just can't stop wondering about that bloke's... Is it hair or plastic? or What is that on his head? Either it's the world's worst wig. I mean, somebody must know. Is it his hair or is it a wig? Or is it? Did, did he have an accident with one of those um, cans of squirty cream? <laughs> but why would anybody, why would a grown-up go out looking like that? It's just mystifying, isn't it? What's going on there? Bob tweets, it could have been oh so different if Labour had voted in the right milliband. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the other one is uh, smoother. He, he's just got that sort of white, white dot of hair right in front of his uh, head, which I find very suspicious, like an alien. But um, yeah, he's a bit smoother than uh, the other one, yeah, than Ed. But I'm not sure smooth is what we are after at the moment. We've got no end of um, sticky-fingered smoothies, eh, Bodge? <laughs> yeah. All revved up and ready to go. Selzy. Hello, Maxine. Hello. Oh, struth, you're loud. How are you, mud? I ain't spoken to you for ages. Have now, I been lucky? I like to leave it. I like to leave it a little while so you get excited when I do phone up. Now, okay. the last time I spoke to you, I was telling you about the pigeons in the tree that had babies. Yeah, I remember that. You had, uh, pigeon- them, yes. yeah, you had pigeons outside your tree, and they were, now, and they had babies. Babies, a little baby squab, and you looked at the picture and you said it was horrendous. Very, very ugly babies. Yeah, yeah pigeons. no, they're not. Nice. Now, guess what now? My father-in-law is 88 and he's built me a hedgehog house, right? What, to, hedgehog. to live in? Not for me, no. <laughs> I don't live in... I live in my house, no, for a hedgehog. <laughs> oh, for, oh, OK, so that makes sense, yeah. Right, so he's built me a hedgehog house and he's down the end of my garden, right? And we've got this big fat hedgehog that wanders around the garden. And I'll take it out food every night, a lovely hedgehog. What does it eat? Look, um, I've got a packet of hedgehog food. They eat little pellets. <laughs> hedgehog yeah. food? There's no such thing. Yes, there is. I've got a bag of it here. It's little pellets. You give the hedgehogs. Are you sure they're not hedgehog flavoured crisps? No, they're little pellets. Hedgehog food. Okay, I'll then. I'll go out and buy my bag. £2.49. I'll spend that. It's so not, it's not a anyway. hedgehog that has been pelletised. No, it's a hedgehog with the prickles and the four legs. You know what a hedgehog looks like. Well, I do you? know what a hedgehog looks like, but I can't imagine if, if they, you know, if they heated it and they dried it out and then they put it through no. a machine that makes pellets out of it. Are you sure it's not, not pellets out of the hedgehog, made out of hedgehogs? No, no, it's hedgehog food. It's, it's hedgehog, dog and right. cat food. It's, not, it's, made, it's food. not food made of hedgehogs. It's food for, no, it's made for hedgehogs. hedgehogs. Right, OK. You're trying to start a debate here now, wouldn't you? I know your game, my love. Right, now, anyway. Yeah, and in closing. I, <laughs> I, look, I said to him, I goes, look, can you do me a little lap so I can lift the roof up on his little house? Yeah. Why? I had a look today. Mm-hmm. I've got three hoglets. Oh, Really? So it's been um, baby hedgehogs. It's been out having um, hot hedgehog interface with another one. Disgusting! No, I call it moving. In your, I call it moving cuddles, my darling. Moving cuddles. Yeah, they've been during the night. In your garden. Oh. In my garden of all places now. So I've got little baby hedgehogs. I go out and feed them other night, and you know what, my dog. Barney, I've got a little dog, a Bichon Freeze. Is that a yappy dog? No, it's not. It sounds like a yappy dog to me. No, he's not a yappy dog. He's okay, lovely. He was my mum's. God right. rest her soul. She passed away 15, many years ago. 15 seconds. Is that all I got? Yeah. Oh, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, you know the Will Smith debacle? Yes. 
if his wife had got up and slapped him, what do you think would have happened? Um, I think that people would have been okay with that, <laughs> generally. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Hold the line. I'm trying to connect you. At the moment, I'm trying to connect uh, Maria in Hammersmith. Maria. Hello. Maria. Yes. Yes. Yes, Maria. Right. Well, I was saying that if Mr. Shunak goes to the States to sell the NHS, he was meeting at Christmas, just before Christmas, he was meeting with health companies. And there is, a, there is a, a GP who's written a book, not a very thick book, um, relating all this, that relating that uh, the government is selling the NHS to American companies. Different companies are interested in different parts of the NHS. Yeah, I bet they are. And this, when you said, it, when you said it's, a, it's not a very thick book, were you, did you have me in mind? I haven't. Pardon? What? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, what? You're selling it to me based on the the, the lack of pages. Is uh, <laughs> I'm taking that no, as an insult. I, no, it's not a thick, not a very thick book. Yeah, man. that's what I'm saying. He, yeah, not he, a very thick book. No, even even he, a moron like me could pay attention to get through it. No, right. No, I haven't seen the book myself, but mm. I know it's on the internet. Right. I've forgotten the title. You know. That's okay. The title I, I'm not going to read it anyway. <laughs> is the title is very interesting. Is it? Yes, but I can't remember the can't title. Remember it. Oh, well. Was I that terminal decline or something yeah, like something that? Something like that. It sounds like yeah, the NHS. Yeah. Terminal no, listen, decline. Listen, this is very sim very this is very important, important. because yeah. the ministers are not talking about it. This GP is dismayed. He says, How is it? The ministers are not talking about whether they, when they are discussing it in meetings regularly. You know, they sell. They well, they sell don't. They don't want to tell us about it. Right, and he also accused the media of being supine and complicit. Yeah, that's that, about right. Because the the media could be uh, reporting it, for example, mm -hmm. and nobody's saying anything. Nobody's saying anything and, at all. No. Are you taking the mic out of me? No, I'm. I'm agreeing with with everything you're saying, but um, you? no, but I, I, there might be a hint of Mickey taking, but not a lot. No, I, I'm. Uh, I'm in accord. I'm in agreement with what it is that you're telling me. Yeah, I do believe that they're trying to. Um, they're, they're t where we're going is the American healthcare model, which is the that's worst terrible. healthcare model that's, in the Western that's world. Terrible. Yeah, I am a. I'm, I'm a I am a victim of it. I am being treated by Connect Health. Well, no, 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 no. You, we can't get into um, what company is uh, treating you. But the the American model is where we're going. Absolutely, in in everything, really. And the American model is winner takes all. In uh, evil socialist Europe, no! you know the uh, the like, particularly in the Scandi countries, they tend to spread the wealth about a bit more. And the, res and the result is happier people. And I know I keep going on about H-A-P-P-Y-ness, and it does seem like a superficial thing to talk about, but what's the point of life if it's not to maximise your happiness? Nobody ever on their deathbed thought, God, I wish I'd changed my car more often. Do they? It's, I wish I had more time. I wish I could have done more pleasant things instead of just furiously um, uh, being on the, the, like a hamster wheel. The hamster wheel of life. Running furiously, getting nowhere. And what they do in uh, other countries, they spread the wealth about a bit for the benefit of all, which creates a happier country. In this country, however, under the, uh, under the uh, current leadership, we're going... The American route on pretty much everything, which is if you are rich, you're just fine. If you're not, good luck to you. And particularly with the healthcare, I mean, that, that we're going away from the European model, which was, you know, pretty much our model, 
for the longest time. And we're going towards the American model of, um, of excellent healthcare if you can afford it and absolutely nothing at all. We'll call you up to put you on a waiting list to go on a waiting list to see a doctor who will put you on a waiting list. That's what that's that's our future. Anyway, thanks a lot, Maria, and I hope you get your issue sorted. Sutex, when they say we have the fifth biggest economy in the world, is that good? Why have we got such a financial problem with such a big debt? Well, I see the answer I gave some moments ago about spreading the wealth around. Don't make no, never mind if we've got the fifth biggest economy in the world, if none of us can um, actually access some of the wealth that is created to make that so. I mean, you, you walk through some of the... Uh, postcodes in London and the, the, the people there got so much money it's virtually pouring out the bricks they got so much cash but none of it's landing on us so it doesn't make no difference the result is that everything is more expensive because there's way more millionaires than there used to be and the millionaires have increased the value of their assets massively over the past few years but none of it's landing on us Trickle-down economics doesn't work. Sienna text, David Beckham and Southgate should be out of pitch long time ago. Both are weak. <laughs> what? David Beckham and Southgate should be out of pitch long time ago. Both are weak, says Sienna. Well, I've got no idea what that means. What's David Beckham got to do with the Gareth, Gareth Southgate? The manager. I mean, David Beckham is just a walking uh, advert now. What does he actually do? Just shows up and smiles and collects tattoos. What, what's he for anymore? But he used to be a thing. And uh, Gareth Southgate is, um, oh, I don't know, seems to be a decent enough bloke, I suppose. Um, Pamela Tex, I dream of me and Donald Trump playing golf. That's great. That's great, Pamela. I wish you all the best for that. Gene says, not only did Will Smith thank God for his award, but he also blamed the devil for making him hit Chris Rock. <laughs> oh, come on. What is it with these people? How can you be so self-obsessed that you think that God, who sat out the Holocaust, is going to personally intervene to make you win a present for pretending to be someone else for $10 million. How can you be that self-obsessed? It's mystifying to me. It really is. I just don't get it. How can you arrive at that position in life? Diana says, I was watching Question Time last night when somebody said that doctors were using food banks. If that's true, then we're all screwed as they have good salaries. Yes, they do. Doctors are using food banks. Well, that doesn't seem right. It'll be MPs using food banks next. That'll never happen. Although, while pulling in a six-figure government and MP salary, a senior minister complained that the cost of living crisis was making life tricky for his family. And which insensitive gaslighting oaf might that be? Step forward, the actual policing minister, Kit Malthouse. He bemoaned the cost of oil to heat his family home in rural Hampshire uh, on the day that MPs received a £2,212 pay rise. And to put that in perspective, £2,212 is about a 10% pay rise for the average earner in his constituency. Are you getting a 10% rise, you residents of North West Hampshire? No. Of course not. He conducted a series uh, of media interviews, working from his luxury home, all toasty warm, in front of a log fire. And he admitted that energy prices, which kicked in today, are going to make life tough for millions of Britons. But, of course, he defended to Chancellor Rishi Sunak over his uh, handling of the economy. <laughs> so he's concerned to show that he's concerned about us, just not concerned enough to actually say or do anything about it. Just another nodding dog. They all sound the same. The Prime Minister has made it very clear that 
and then numbers and spurious assertions. 86%, 5 million, and of course, over 50%. And, and what I'm saying is... Yeah, over and over and over again. And that doesn't count the 5 billion that I previously mentioned and the 38% of the 125 billion that we promised last year. And just numbers and numbers and numbers. Painful. MP salaries rise to £84,144, up by 2.7%. Uh, the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority announced that uh, last month. <laughs> what an absolute nonsense uh, that organisation is. The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority. I mean, they're about as useless as the Financial Conduct Authority. I mean, both names seem to have been chosen as a joke. There are no standards in Parliament if the prime blooming minister can lie and lie and lie and be told that he's lying by his own government departments and then just go back out and lie again. What standards is it that they're um, overseeing exactly? And as for the Financial Conduct Authority, I mean, they're supposed to oversee conduct in the finan financial finagling racket. It's like saying the Mafia have a standards and ethics department. Absolutely. So the actual policing minister, Kit Malthouse, complained that the cost of living crisis was making life tricky for his family. And he's on £84,144 a year, plus his ministerial salary for, you know, excellence in being himself, which puts him on £115,824 a year. What? 115000 a year. That's about five times what the average poor dope who pays taxes gets. And that's not the it of it, uh, of course. There's plenty more um, uh, money where that came from. Uh, and on the same day that the biggest jump in domestic energy bills in living memory came into effect, and days before national insurance contributions are going to increase by 1.25 percentage points, the Conservative MP for North West Hampshire, on a six-figure salary, plus a quarter of a million in expenses, is asking for our sympathy. Stop whining. People who can't afford it are bracing for a £1,600 hit to their income. A record rise in energy bills started already. It kicks off a year of economic pain. The energy price cap is going to jump from 1,277 to 1,971. That's an increase of about 700 quid. And it's going to be up over 700 pound in October, they're guessing. So it'll be a 100% increase in all. And inflation hits levels not seen for 30 years. Millions of workers are bracing, bracing, bracing for a uh, hike in the national insurance contributions. And Kit Malthouse, the, actualing, the actual policing minister, said there was hope that inflation would recede shortly <laughs> and that the Chancellor was studying the impact of the cost of living crisis. There's hope that inflation would recede. You hear that? Of course, it also might increase. What does he know? And as for a fishy studying the impact, what, like people study fish in a bowl, maybe? Or peer at us with binoculars from behind the guarded gates of one of his mansions. See how we're doing with no heat or food. It'd be like a science experiment. Just a little amusement for him. He'll be studying us. See what happens. And the man in charge of the money has so much money that he didn't even know that his wife received £12 million in dividend payments last year. Can you imagine how rich you'd have to be not to know if your other half got £12 million quid last year? I mean, just pause and think about that. I bet you know if your other half found a tenor in an old jacket. And while we're on the subject, Fish's wife, who is uh, richer than a blooming queen, by the way, actually took furlough money for the staff of some of her businesses. You paid a woman that's a billionaire to keep her staff paid during the lockdown. But I'm sure she's very grateful. Thank you! Grateful that we are so generous to those so much better off than us. I bet they wake up laughing. 
Meanwhile, the Resolution Foundation think tank said that the number of British, uh, or English rather, households in fuel stress, that is those spending at least 10% of their total budgets on energy bills, was set to double overnight from 2.5 to 5 million. Citizens Advice Chief Executive Dame Claire Moriarty said the energy price cap will uh, potentially be ruinous for millions of people across this country. Millions of people that voted Conservative at the last election. And the one before that. And the one before that. And the only way the government will help now is if they sense that they'll lose at the ballot box badly enough to get chucked out of power. So whatever you do, poor people of the country, vote Conservative next time, or you might not get treated like you don't matter anymore, which is apparently what you want. As I have been told a thousand times, that you know what you voted for. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC with Nick Abbott. Shut up. I can't. 0345 6060 973. Will texts, I'd like to undo the triple lock on Sunak's purse. <laughs> uh, the Wirral, Gwyn. Hello, Nick. Gwyn. Um, it's about the meter readings and all that stuff. Um, I'm on a prepay meter, I'm poor. And my current readings are 2164. But I got into fuel payments of 140 quid last year, which I put in in January. Mm. <clears throat> um, but it's now gone up to 53. There's another standing chart that is. Yeah. So it's gone up to 53 pence from 21 standing chart. So I've been like changing my light bulbs. Cutting down uh, everything, mm. and they, they put forty well, nearly thirty odd pence on the standing charge. Yeah, why is that? Because uh, what, what's uh, the standing charge actually cover? That's that's basically your uh, rental. Well, it's family, it's of family, the, the, the electrics uh, that are coming in, the, the maintenance, and all that stuff. Right. So it's it's basically the, the sort of rental yeah. charge of your equipment, but yeah. that that's not going up. What, why is that going up? But what what, what makes me powerful is like. You've got like um, a company called um, Ovo. Mm. I, I have named that because it's a specific reason. It's because they provide 100% energy, for, you know, sustainable energy. So why are they putting their prices up? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I know precious little about it, but uh, as far as I'm aware, it, it and this is the reason why it wouldn't really help us to um, try to explore the, the North Sea, yeah, is yeah. that it all gets sold internationally at the same price. So therefore, it's not really renewable. When you subscribe to a renewable energy or a mm. green company, you're not actually doing that. It's because they they get dirty energy and then they put it back into the grid. So it's like um, ridiculous, isn't it? Well, I'm, I don't know that that's true. I mean, if if a company says that they they're 100 percent green energy, then presumably, well, how would they know? That's a good point, there, uh, Gwyn. Thanks for that. How would they know? I mean, they don't have a pipe that runs direct from a windmill <laughs> do they they just get it from oh, i don't know there's probably a big bucket of electricity somewhere they uh, they keep it in a bucket i expect and then they just take whatever they need out the bucket is that how it works probably is but um yeah i mean see that's the problem with um north sea uh, gas and oil it would take forever, apart from anything else, and it wouldn't reduce the price of our bills. Not a penny, because that all gets set internationally. And it all appears to be set internationally by people who are intent on ripping us off. It's profiteering. I mean, there's no real reason why the fuel bills have gone up for so much. Why? Why have they gone up this much? I think they're just... And, and if the... Companies that are providing it are making profits that they couldn't possibly have imagined. They're wildest fantasies. Then that means that the actual cost of pro uh, providing that fuel has not gone up. It's just that the amount that we're prepared to pay for it has gone up. Hence the massive profits. So they are profiteering. 
So we should be taxing them to the hilt and taking that money back because it's ours. They've just taken advantage. And in France, like I've mentioned, the uh, French government has insisted that um, the major provider uh, keeps their the increase in their um, bills to 4%, not 40 or 400, 4. As in 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, 2, um, yeah, uh, two 3, um, uh, 11. Oh. 4. 4%. Ours is going up 100%. In France, 4. So it can be done. It's just that this government prefers not to do it. And you have to ask yourself, well, why? If they're so concerned about, uh, you know, the little people, not leprechauns. Sutex, how many U-turns has this government made? Well, they're not doing U-turns anymore. I think they're on a roundabout. They're just going around and around and around and around. Just trying to figure out which road to take. Which one will we uh, will, will um, reflect on them the best? Oh, here's a road that says uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Look, look at it, because it could be Jeremy Corbyn. Boo! Or um, foreigners in dinghies. <coughs> or, um, you know, some woke nonsense. Oh, they, they've really um, hooked into that big time. They're going to be uh, pouring that all over us from uh, now and right, all the way through May for a start. Just see how it goes. Be woke this and woke that. Woke people are coming to take your biscuits. Bagshot. Hello, Charles. Oh, Charles. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Charles. Um, yes, thank you, sir. Um, you talked about the American health care system. Mm. Well, I lived in the United States for five years, and I worked for a company that provided health insurance. And in comparison, I'm sorry to say, but the NHS is garbage. Now, hear me out. The... Well, we it depends. It depends if you've got insurance or if you're exactly, if you're no, rich. It, it, no, is it, hear me out. I'm not saying we go to. You've got to pay for your insurance. We need a hybrid model like they've got in the United, like they've got in France or Germany or yeah. maybe Australia. Mm. Now the problem is the reason the NHS, the frontline staff at the NHS are absolutely superb, but they're failed by useless management. We could put another a hundred billion into the NHS, and we'd still have the problem. What we need is a hybrid model where the hospitals are privatised, but the government provides the insurance for everyone, like they do in France and Germany. The problem is, I mean, they just this is an organisation that is in, run so poorly because it's government run, and you get you've got like twelve billion they blew on an IT project that was a total disaster. What we need is the government to pay for the insurance. And the hospitals to be privatised. Because the way it is at the moment, it's a total, complete disaster. Yeah, and if, the... if we could start from scratch, then I think you might have something there. And the the system that they have in France and Germany and uh, all other points, north, south, east and west in Europe, is, is better than ours. And the proof of that is the outcomes. The outcomes yeah. abroad are better than ours. The, they don't have the waiting lists that we do and... Uh, yeah. And this sort of top-down thing, we've got to go to a GP in order to be referred to a consultant. Yeah. If you know your knee is bad, then you should go straight to yeah. uh, like an orthopaedic surgeon and he should take a look at you rather than the GP saying, well, I don't know what it is. I'll send you on to somebody who might. You, you should be able to go straight to the person who, who actually knows yeah. without this in-between step. So they do that over there. And in, uh, in America, it's probably the worst of all systems yeah. unless you've got a load of money in which case it may be the best system in the world i mean if i could have if 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 i could, if everyone in in britain could have had the health insurance that i had in the states mm. it'd be brilliant yeah. and the problem is is yeah now in the american system um <laughs> if you can't afford health insurance you're screwed yeah and completely. yeah we don't we don't want that but but, well, yeah, no, you, we don't, but I'm not sure that they don't. I'm not sure that the yeah. people who are actually going to make it happen, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that they want that because, you know, they're all rich. So, well, And, well, and the thing about rich people is that they don't like paying for the upkeep of poor people. I mean, that's, yeah. that's one of their big things. That's why they don't like taxes is because it goes for the upkeep of poor people. 
But the thing is, just backhanders too, isn't it? I mean, we saw what happened. You've got government involvement. You've got backhanders going on. You've got them and um, how many billions did we waste on this PPE and that didn't work? And some mates of this is the problem when the government's involved. You get the, when you've got politicians and mates of mates. Yeah, but that, are, that's not the NHS really. I mean, that's that's just a problem no, with that's... with the political system in general. But but the NHS. Um, it's it's never been as badly thought of as it is now. I don't think in its history it has not been as badly thought of as it is now. After uh, 12 years of uh, conservative rule, you, you'd almost to think that it, that was the plan. If you were, uh, you know, unkind, you might think that that's the plan. It's not, an, it's not a mistake. It's not an error. It's the direction of travel. Uh, thanks a lot, Charles. Got to go. 0345 6060 973. It's 1230 on LBC. The news headlines with Andy Ivey. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Are you trying to tell me that this is your act? Sadly, yes. Sean Tex, Dominic Raab is an overpromoted estate agent. <laughs> what, you mean angular, tetchy, humanoid Dominic Dekje Raab? An overpromoted estate agent, you say? This stunning country benefits from a deep, thick carpet of people that are easily led. <laughs> Everything is stunning to an estate agent, have you noticed? You, you look at an estate agent's ads and absolutely every single property they've got is described in those terms. This stunning shed <laughs> benefits from wooden walls and a roof. This stunning parking space comes with paint around it. They have to pick another word. Most um, three-bed semis are not stunning. I think you'll find that that is actually a correct statement. <coughs> Shelley text, my cat licked me on my nose earlier. Oh. Disgusting. That's just awful, Shelley. You don't want to allow that. Uh, Bodman. Hello, Malcolm. Hi, oh, Nick. How are you doing, sir? Great, mate. Nick, um, I'm roughly your age, around about the 60 mark. 60, 60 mark? Two. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm 60 at the end of the month. Nick, in my 62 years on this planet, I've had 13 years of labour from 97 to 2010, and I had what, six, seven years of labour in the 70s. Mm. And for the rest of my life, yeah. I've had Tory government. Now, the electricity, the water, uh, where else is there, the gas was sold off in the 70s, 80s-ish. Yeah. And, and they were sold off because they would be so much better in private hands. Mm. Yeah, plus, uh, you know, all, all of the money that we would uh, be able to share around because of it. You know, these, these national assets that were being sold off for the benefit of the people of this country, all of whom got um, nothing. And private privatisation would be so much better for those industries. Yeah. And look where we are now, Nick. Oh, we'd and be Nick, paying much, uh, much well, less because of the competition. That worked out well, didn't it? Um, I rang a Nick um, in, in the hope of, of, of speaking to the last caller, who I'm almost sure, did, did he not say he had experience of uh, the industry in America, the medical yes. yeah. industry yeah. in America? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I, I'm, I, my guess is he was maybe an insurance, private insurance salesman <laughs> or something like that. And people like him are absolutely desperate to get their hands on the NHS. And they will say anything it takes to convince people that we need to do the same with our beautiful National Health Service as we, we've done to our electric, our gas, and our water, right. and our railways, and our railing, um, railways, and our local authority housing stock. It seems Just as though uh, it. it's less a government. When, when the Conservatives get in, it, it's less a government and more a smash-and-grab raid. They just, they just look around the, the cupboards to see if there's anything that they haven't sold yet for a, for a short-term profit for a vanishingly few number of people. And if they can come up with something, it's like I, I've said this before, if they could sell our air, they'd have done it by now. But the problem is, Nick, I thought that the Labour years were pretty good under Blair, especially. But the reality is that Labour 
are responsible for everything that's happened bad yes. in the last 60, two years. Correct. My life is Labour, all yeah. Labour's fault. Specifically, you know, Jeremy uh, Corbyn. Yeah, but, but, but worse than that, everything that's happened in the last 12 years mm-hmm. is because of Blair and Iraq. Yes. Blair and Iraq <laughs> yes. caused yes. where we are now. Yes. I, I mean, the fact that Saddam is gone, uh, the guy in Libya is gone, you know... that These seem like beneficial outcomes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I'm, yeah, just looking at a, I'm, I'm just looking at a graph of uh, the annual average rise in government spending on the NHS above inflation. And you will not be surprised to learn that by far and away since 1949, the Labour government under Tony Blair and then Gordon Brown spent way more, 6% above inflation. And when the Conservatives got in, it plummeted to virtually zero. And then they said, uh, well, gosh, I wonder why the, uh, the NHS is doing so badly. They, they need to work out a quotient, a number, a factor, Nick, for how technology has increased the, 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 the bang per buck, which is not simply the nurses and the doctors and all that, but the tech that helps those people keep yeah. people alive and healthier for longer. Well, that because costs, that costs the, the, a lot, you see, doesn't it? I mean, not only the, the yeah, machines that go... They cost a lot of money to buy, and they're inventing new ones all the time. But then they've got all these uh, exciting drugs. Want to score some pot? And they cost a lot more as well. And people are living longer, so they're getting more complicated illnesses for a longer period of time. And uh, and the amount of money that you're going to have to spend on uh, health just to stay still is going through the so roof. All in health, Go on. So all in all, Nick, I would say, you know, um, the NHS that we've got, I don't think people should be complaining at all. I do. Well, I do. They, well, well, they should be complaining. I don't think they should be complaining at the people who are actually engaged in providing health, not nurses and not doctors, because they're doing what is probably, but to the most part, an excellent job under very, very difficult circumstances. But we should be complaining about where all our money is going and the direction of travel for the uh, NHS, which is doesn't appear to me to be in the direction of the best interests of the people of this country. No, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you, you go, I mean, you send an MP into hospital like, and ask them, you know, to, to work a shift in the shoes of a doctor and nurse, and they'd last about five minutes before they'd either be vomiting <laughs> or they'd, they'd, be, they'd be sitting in a heap in the corner because they, they couldn't stick to the pressure. You know, the, just the unpleasantness. Mm. of the, some of the things that people in these places have to do and the yeah. stress it causes. Right, well, cause. I, I don't think we're disagreeing. You, uh, you may no. have got the wrong end of the stick. I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that they're doing no. an excellent job under very trying circumstances. Exactly, exactly. We, we agree to... Yeah, we agree on that. We, right? we agree to no, agree. But, but, wow, we're in total concord. People, people like the last caller, it just annoys me that... that, that I, I mean... But he oh, may be right. You see, we we, we, press, we we praise the NHS as though it is unimprovable. And if you do that, then yeah. then you're part of the problem. It is improvable. It uh, and absolutely is. And, and, and the proof is that you get better outcomes for various diseases and complications in other countries. Pretty much every other country in Europe has a better outcome and a better sort of patient interface god I, that's a terrible mm. phrase but um you'd think of a better one a patient interface affirmative than uh, than, yeah. than we do i mean they don't have these massive long queues for to get on a waiting list there's no queue to get on a waiting list you just go see your doctor i mean i know i know that that's true because i've talked to people who live in france and spain and places like that they're, they're ill then they can see their doctor straight away. Kind of like private health care. But we in this country have the worst of all worlds. We have an NHS that is failing people because it's not funded sufficiently well, because we have fewer beds than pretty much anywhere else in Europe. We have fewer acute beds. We have fewer nurses. We have fewer doctors and fewer consultants. And all of this, I mean, the, the, the system has been run down under the uh, Conservative administration. Under Labour, they, they really did spend a good good amount, but under the Tories, it just plummeted. <sighs> but
but it could be better and the system itself could be better. And once we sort of rid ourselves of this insistence that it must be free at the point of use, which gives you the idea that it's free, which then gives some people in the NHS the idea that you're not a customer, not like private medicine, it's, you're not a customer so much as an irritant. There is a bit of that. Whereas in private medicine, you don't get that. They come out, shake you warmly by the hand, take you into their office, call you by your name. Is there anything else I can do for you? And 30 minutes later, you'll still be sitting there <laughs> trying to get out the door while they're asking you, is there anything else that's wrong with you that I can take a peek at? Rather than, oh, it's five minutes and your time's up. Next. But it's not the fault of the doctors and the nurses and so on in this country. They're, they're just doing the best they can under very, very trying circumstances, which have been engineered for them by um, this and previous administrations, with an eye on making people so dissatisfied that they just go private. Like I was saying, we've got the worst of all worlds, because private medicine, is the, the cost of it is through the roof in this country. It's absolutely preposterous how much it costs. But they make it so that it's uh, for, you know, a lot of people. You just can't not do it. If you have the money and your life is being ruined by some like niggling thing, like your knees out, you need uh, like knee surgery or hip surgery or your eyes need doing or whatever it is. It's just ruining your life. And you don't get this time back again. It's not a rehearsal. This is it. That last minute there, just gone. You'll never get that again. And so people are looking at their life ticking away and they think, well, I can't walk. And I've just been put on, on a, a waiting list to go on a waiting list to see if I can get, get on a waiting list to get my uh, knee done in like a year or two years or wherever it might be. So you go private and you, you pay a ton of money to do that. Whereas in um, other countries, not too far from here, in Europe, you don't get that. Because it's private, because the whole thing is private. It's just that it doesn't cost you any more as a person than we pay through our taxes here. It just seems different because there's no actual money that appears to change hands. But of course there is. Billions, hundreds, uh, over 100 billion, 130 billion a year, something like that. So it isn't free. It just, it, they pretend it, that it is. It is not unimprovable, the NHS. 0345, 60, but you, you can't improve it by selling it and, uh, take, and uh, adopting the American model, which, like I said before, is uh, the, um, the winner takes it all, which is fine if you're a winner. 0345, 6060, 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. <laughs> This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 60 60 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running light. 0345 60 60 973. Uh, Harrow, Sebastian. Hey, Nick. It's Little People. I'm the Little People coming back to you. Oh, um, great. Nick. Yes. Um, now... We don't want the private grubby fingers of private companies mm. touching all our earnings and savings and things that we've put into the NHS over the But they are. I mean, wh where do you think they, they buy all the medicines? From grubby private corporations that make medicines. Same with the machines, same with the bandages and the plasters and everything. True, but we we remember the PFI bids that, that we 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 went into partnership mm, with yeah. with private companies who yeah. are, we are still paying for. Stupid and we still idea. haven't got out of yeah. yet. Stupid idea, but they, it was to make it appear as though they built a lot of hospitals. They were sort of off book. Yeah, for, a, a short term for, political benefit with uh, like long term uh, financial consequences. Consequence, and is, are, are they doing these forty new hospitals in that same sort no. of way? There are no 40 new hospitals. <laughs> they keep saying it, but it, it continues to be untrue. 40 hospitals, how many? 40. 40, how many? Yeah. 40. 40. 40. Yeah, like, and one? Maybe one. <laughs> oh, dear. But I wouldn't want any, any, any private company taking any, any advantage because what they tend to think of is just profits, ka-ching, Money hitting their tills. Well, yeah, and 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 they're not. Then they could even get together and you know uh, force prices to go high.
um, basically well, of course they will. conglomerations. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want any anything to do with private. But yes, we definitely need a much more efficient system. But the thing somehow. is, you know, in Germany, they do not look wistfully at our system and think, gosh, I, I wish we had uh, something like the NHS, because they're, they're utterly delighted with what they have in Germany, which is well, more of a sort of a hybrid model where people do have insurance through their work, you know, just in the same way that we pay our taxes and it goes to the NHS. So they pay a similar amount, but they don't call it tax they call it insurance it's the same thing um, and, and well, but the but the result is that when they go to the doctor they're treated like a private patient not just a part of this the, the uh, smelly masses who flood in as soon as we open the doors but if you try that in, in this country it just won't it just won't work why not um, it just well the companies here don't have that outlook of let's help people they have the outlook of, uh, we have the outlook of, let's make as much money as we possibly can. Yeah, but and, they're, they're no different to Ukraine. here in Germany. We, we can organise them along the same lines, and it's not just Germany. It's, it's pretty much every country in Europe has a, a, a better, better run system with better outcomes for the patients. How, why would you not want that? Which part of that doesn't sound good? I don't want the Tories to actually do that because they're right. Well, put okay, some back that that place. is that would be the failing part for yeah. me too. <laughs> yes, if we could have somebody put... other than them organise it, might be a better idea. Yeah, like an independent body, like yes. the, like the one. Well, I hope it's not going to be something like the the, the the independent body that decides their pay. No. Not them. Definitely not them. No. That's a big no from me. And furthermore, no, 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 no. No, definitely no. Negative. I mean, have you been treated in another country for a medical issue? I haven't actually, to be right. honest. Um, but I do, I do, I do get private com private health care from my com from my company. Right. And um, and what's the and experience it, like when you go to the doctor? It absolutely like. First of all, you've got to go to the GP, get a referral. Yeah. Once you've got the referral, it's like. It's like you've opened the gates to heaven. It's like living yeah. on a pink cloud, isn't it? <laughs> it it's, it's heaven. It's like, oh, please come over here. You can wait over here. Have yeah. a coffee while you're waiting. Exactly. A coffee and, and a magazine that was printed this month. This if you can month. believe that. Exactly. And then, and then they say, oh, did we miss you? Can you please come over here? We're going to... Get you seen immediately. We can Back see you. Service. You can get, and you can get your MRI done yesterday, if not sooner. And you can get any treatment that you like under the sun, as long as they, as long as you call up your insurance company and get the re the required yeah. number. Then they'll have you uh, in a in a tube that goes me 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 me. Best sounding I, things I, ever. M MRI machines. Some, some, somebody should record that and uh, release it as a single. <laughs> They sound fantastic. <laughs> I'd gone to the cheap, I'd gone to the get 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 something done, uh, but but they, they the, the the consultant he saw um, there was something uh, some various varicose veins kind of thing starting on my legs, and he says, "Oh, we need to get that seen to yeah. uh, make sure that you can actually get that done." And I said, "Is it necessary right now?" He says, "No. In about ten years' time, you will actually have problems. So if you get it sorted now, then you won't have to you know right. live with preventative all the medicine." <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. Right. Well, well uh, if yeah. if you need them ripped out, to Sebastian, then I'm not doing anything uh, after the show. I'll I'll give it a go. I'll give it a bash. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I've, I've got no idea what I'm yeah. doing, but I'll make an effort. How does that sound? Definitely. All definitely. right. Anyway, okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Paul texts, our supreme leader's defence is that he did not know that parties were held in his house. So the man in charge of the country can't even run his home in a lawful manner. This surely explains the mess we're all in. At least the fish, <laughs> at least the fish are happy. <laughs> Explain yourself, Bodger. I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 I... Yeah, they're British fish and all the happier for it. Ain't that right, Smug? You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Uh... Tim Tex, we ended up with Boris Johnson because he was the least worst option between him and uh, Uncle Jezza. You remember Jeremy Corbyn, don't you? Boo! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. 
He was the least, Boris Johnson's the least worst option between him and uh, Jeremy Corbyn. I, I don't know. I don't know that Jeremy Corbyn would have organised his party's finances such that they were so beholden to Russians, for instance. I don't think that Jeremy Corbyn would have accepted a six-figure sum for some woman to play tennis with him. I can't really see Jeremy Corbyn doing that. Can you? I couldn't see Jeremy Corbyn paying his mates £108 million, writing a cheque for that suspicious amount over and over and over again for PPE that either didn't exist or didn't work when it arrived and that we've been spending a million pounds a day on uh, storing and we are now burning. I just don't think that Jeremy Corbyn would have done that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Can't see it. I don't think that Jeremy Corbyn would have appointed one of his friends to head up a system that came up with a phone app that cost £37 billion that didn't work. I just don't think that Jeremy Corbyn would have done that. I don't think Jeremy Corbyn would have gone to the Italian villa of one of his close personal friends that the security services were saying warning, warning. might be a spy. I don't think that Jeremy Corbyn would have ditched his security detail and gone over there to that house for a, uh, a spot of partying to the point that you looked like he was, um, he'd been turned inside out. He was so hung over the next day and has never explained uh, since why he ditched his security to go there. I just don't think Jeremy Corbyn would have done that. I kind of doubt that Jeremy Corbyn would have taken a £2,212 pay rise. I, I sort of I sort of doubt that too. But um, you go ahead, uh, Tim, and uh, tell us how bad Jeremy Corbyn would have been. I'm all ears. I'll be back tonight at uh, 10 o'clock. In the meantime, this uh, let me just remind you that this show does get squirted up the internet as a podcast virtually the moment it's over. It'll get to put on the internet without the news or the ads, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity and you won't have to sell one of your children to pay your fuel bill. You see? Benefits. I'm back at 10 tonight. Ian Payne is here at four. But first, it's Clyde Ball. Nick, thank you. And coming up after the news at one, the cost of living. Energy prices rocketing the very same day MPs get their 2K pay rise. Do you think that this government understands the kind of financial difficulties that ordinary people are facing? We'll have the latest on the war in Ukraine. What will Putin do next as his troops fail to progress, driven back by Ukrainian forces? Will he look for an exit route or escalate the situation? And... As the first £50 fines are sent to Downing Street officials, has the Partygate scandal been dragged out long enough for it all to be forgiven and forgotten? The number to call, 0345 6060 973. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at one o'clock, Will Smith has resigned from the Academy. 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 Has.